start looking at the vessels in the thoracic cavity and the cervical region of the cat. So we've opened up the chest cavity. And one of the first vessels that you come to when you enter the thoracic cavity is the internal thoracic vein and artery. And another name for that is the internal mammary artery and vein. The internal thoracics run along either side of the sternum like this. And we'll start by looking at the surface anatomy features of the heart. So you can see some of the coronary vessels on the surface here. And if you see pink vessels, those are branches of the coronary arteries. And the blue would be branches of the coronary or cardiac veins. We can also see the auricles. This would be the right and the left auricle. Between the two auricles, you have the pulmonary trunk. Behind the pulmonary trunk is the aortic arch. So you can see that curving around right here. And this cat, the, the actual vessel itself has been teased away. This is just the latex that's showing. So you can see all the latex, but it still shows you the outline of the actual vessel. So in the cat, you have two branches off of the aortic arch, the brachiocephalic trunk and the left subclavian, which is very long. As you move cranially from that brachiocephalic trunk, you kind of have to move the, the veins out of the way so that you can see there are three branches off of the brachiocephalic. And one is the right subclavian, the right common carotid and the left common carotid. So those are the three branches off of the brachiocephalic trunk. Okay, you can pause it. All right, so starting with the veins coming off the base of the heart, we have the superior vena cava here. And if we turn the heart, we can see the inferior vena cava down here. Coming down into the superior vena cava right away, you'll see that internal thoracic coming down to join with it. And when you get up more towards the head, you see the split here. And those are your brachiocephalic veins, also called the innominate veins. On the cat's right side, we see a large vessel coming from deep in the body cavity here and up to join with the superior vena cava and that's the vertebral vein. The vertebral vein runs alongside the cervical vertebrae and it's inside the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae. Over on the cat's left side you have the vertebral vein draining into the left brachiocephalic vein. So often in cats you see one vertebral draining into a brachiocephalic and then another vertebral will drain into the superior vena cava. So this is kind of typical. If you need to find the vertebral artery, it's easiest to find the vertebral vein first and then search for the vertebral artery because it disappears with the vertebral vein. So I'm digging that vertebral artery out right now. So that one's kind of hard to find unless you find the vertebral vein first. Brachiocephalics are seen here at the top of the superior vena cava. We'll focus in on the jugular veins. This large jugular that's more lateral is the external jugular in the cat. And in the cat, the external jugular is the larger of the two. The internal jugular comes down and joins with the, the external, um, very close to where the brachiocephalic vein is. But this cat, the injection did not take all the way. It kind of pooped out right there. And normally your internal jugular would be running alongside your common carotid like this. So it stops right there. And um, that's where the rest of it would continue on. If you go back to the external jugulars, then those two vessels are connected transversely by this vessel, this is the transverse jugular, and that sits right on top of the larynx. This is the voice box right here. So the transverse jugular runs across the top of the larynx. One final vessel then that's draining into the external jugular, kind of almost along its mid portion here, is the transverse 
scapular. The transverse scapular comes from the scapula region and connects with the mid portion of the external jugular. Out around the side of the, the rib cage here, you can see the ribs have been cut. We have the subclavian vein. The thing about the subclavian is it's very, very short. It's no longer than the end of my probe because it comes from this vessel here, which is the axillary vein, and this vessel here, which usually you have to dig out, that's the subscapular vein. So when the subscapular and the axillary come together, they form a really short subclavian vein. So the subclavian artery we found earlier, that runs underneath the subclavian vein. And when you come out here into the axillary region, um, and we find that subscapular vein, we'll find the subscapular artery disappearing with it. It's this significant branch right here, which yours is broken, but that's the subscapular artery because it's disappearing along with the subscapular vein. All right, then over here we've got long thoracic uh, artery and vein come out, and the only reason we point those little tiny things out, and yours are not the greatest, no offense, not your, pro not your fault or anything, it's okay. but they're just really tiny, and we only point them out because from that point on, we're going to call it the brachial artery and brachial vein. Okay. Okay, so subclavian vein, very short, axillary vein, axillary artery, subscapular vein and dig for the subscapular artery right there. Long thoracics, brachial, brachial. Mm -hmm.